Welcome to video number six. <laughs> All right, welcome back everybody. Hope you're having a great time watching these vids. I'm having a good time making them. I hope you're having a good time watching them. I hope you're learning. Are we learning? Great. Okay, video number six is all about getting in the water. How to become a marine biologist, you gotta get in there. You gotta get in the water. Okay, here's the strategies though. There's lots of different ways to do it. This is gonna be an awesome long list. With every single one of these items, I will tell you that there are exceptions to the rule. There are marine biologists who don't know how to scuba dive. There are marine biologists who don't know how to swim. There are marine biologists who get seasick. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be a marine biologist if you don't do any one of these things, but I would highly encourage it if you're capable and willing to go for it. Try and do all of the things on this list to get as much ocean exposure as possible. Here's a list of all the ways you can get in the water. Ready? Go. One, swimming. Learn to swim. I was a competitive swimmer when I was young. I even was a lifeguard. Great opportunity to be at the beach all summer. Oh my goodness, it was great. Snorkeling. Get yourself a snorkel kit and have it with you, honestly, at all times. Whenever I go on vacation or whenever I go on a short trip, even if it's somewhere that doesn't even have a body of water, you never know when you need your snorkel, okay? You never know. So scuba diving is amazing exposure to the sea and it is the key way of experiencing the ocean. It's also the key way that a lot of research is done and a lot of observation and a lot of exploration is done through scuba diving. It's an investment, but it's so worth it if you're looking for a real career in marine biology. So I believe once you turn eight years old, that's when you can get your first introductory dive in a pool setting. And then I believe it's I believe it's 12 years old. Sorry, how old do you have to be to learn how to scuba dive? Here's what I found on the web for how old you have to be to learn how to scuba dive. I'm pretty sure it's 12. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, I'm wrong. It's 10. This is the Patty website. Patty is the kind of overarching scuba diving certificate body. If you're under 15, you get a junior open water dive certificate, which you can upgrade to an actual open water certificate once you reach 15. 10 year olds, get on it, right? <laughs> so fun. Ask that for your birthday. Okay, so free diving is something that I recently got into it, with proper training. Free diving is a great way with almost no equipment to be able to experience the ocean in a whole new way. I've been learning from this amazing woman named Roberta from Oceanoid, Vancouver, and uh, I would highly recommend training with her if you're in this area. Okay, and here are some options for how you get on the water. Boating, sailing, supping and kayaking. Stand up, s supping is stand up paddle boarding. Slip in, go for a swim, take a look underwater, especially if you have your snorkel equipment with you, just to get more on the water time. One thing I'd recommend is getting your pleasure craft operators card, which is something that they have in Canada. I'm pretty sure they have elsewhere, which is an online test you can take. It's fairly affordable and pretty simple. Uh, it's an open book test from what I remember when I took it. And it is a way for you just to simply have like some basic boating knowledge around boat operation, boat safety, and uh, navigation. So say if you're just going to spend some time on the ed the water's edge, also great. Tide pooling and beach combing are great ways to just simply dig around and get up close and look at all the amazing things that are happening along the water's edge. Uh, the intertidal zone, which is the area from the highest tide line to the lowest tide line, that kind of area where the tide goes up and down, there is some of the most amazing and diverse animals. And so even if that's all you're going to see and that's all you're going to spend your entire marine biology career on is that simple zone where you don't need any scuba equipment. Uh, in most cases, you just need to be able to get your rubber boots on and explore down along the water. Barnacles and sea stars and kelp, chitons, whelks, snails and hermit crabs. There's so much cool stuff that lives in there and just how they actually adapt to living in the intertidal zone is remarkable. Look up the adaptations for a barnacle and they are amazing. In fact, maybe, you know what, I'm gonna do another video about barnacles one day, cause they are the coolest. So when you're not on the water, another great way to learn about the ocean is by bringing the ocean to eye level. I feel like that's what aquariums do. So instead of going into the water, the aquarium brings it to you. Talk about uh, places to volunteer and places to explore. There is amazing resources within the staff and within the signage and resources that aquariums have on their website. There are so many documentaries and films about the oceans nowadays. Mission Blue, of course, Blue Planet, uh, End of the Line, Shark Water. There's some awesome ones about sushi and how the seafood gets to our plate. Those ones are fascinating. Next time you're eating seafood, again, bringing the ocean tide level on dry land, simply eating seafood and looking at it and wondering like, what is this? Or what is this part of its body? Or how does that connect to its shell? Or or even asking the sushi chef, tell me more about this animal. They probably have some kind of knowledge about them and it would be an interesting way to explore the sea in a new way, in a from a different perspective. It's time to gear up folks. 
If you were going to be a marine biologist, there are some key things that you need gear-wise that makes it easier for you to get into the water. Okay, so first off, you need a snorkel and you need a mask. Finding a mask that actually fits your face is key, and so I would definitely go out and find one that actually fits. And don't just try on the first one that looks cool. This one does not look that cool, okay? But honestly, it fits my small face very well. This is actually a kid's mask. Fins, goggles, your pleasure craft operator's card, your scuba diving certificate card, bring your green Bible or your local field guide. Always have that with you. And finally, rubber boots. Does that sound good? Okay, so hopefully those are all the things you can get and that are attainable for you in order to start preparing yourself to get ready to get on the water. And so when you have the opportunity, you are ready to go and equipped. What materials do you already have? And what materials are you looking that you definitely still need? Or if you're still under the age of 10, there's other ways to explore the ocean without becoming a scuba diver and definitely start there. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.